Okay, so we've got to be careful how we handle them. We can't overload them. Is that good management, Martin? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's about protecting for for the future. Um, And that's what he's trying to do. This is sort of Team England. Jude Bellingham is obviously a a huge talent. Um, He may not be needed in the next couple of internationals. They've hardly had any kind of a break. And I think it's uh, the manager being protective. As much as he wants to bring somebody else in, maybe a Stones right now who hasn't played yet, who he does feel needs minutes, who he does believe in, uh, I understand that as well. So, no, I think it's right, right and proper. Um, I'm not sure Greenwood is in the same boat at the moment because, you know, he's, he's not quite performing to the same level, but he's another one again for the future. And uh, if Southgate feels he needs to do that, I think it's right and proper for him to, to make those decisions. Simon? Um, well, player welfare will always be the the, the, the the drum that Martin bangs, and and he's right to in some instances and, and not necessarily in others. Bellingham, I can understand the case because you know once upon a time young players like Wayne Rooney came came through into Everton's first team, and people like David Moyes managed them at very early stages in their career. Greenwood was picked for the European Championships and had to come out because he wasn't fit enough or was injured as a result of or not or not able to you know be, to be able to compete because of the, the level of injury that he had so I'm not entirely sure why he would need to come out of the squad now um, look Southgate will have as England manager an endless level of opinion on whatever he does or doesn't do so who he picks for the squad and why he needs to manage players are based upon what he thinks and what he sees and and, and I would imagine the discussions that he has with the club managers and what he thinks for the for, is for the benefit of the young players and their development into the full national side. So I'm not overly worried about it. I'm not overly worried about saying, well, this is a bit of a snowflake mentality or it's a bit lightweight or these players you know, should be able to perform at this level. Um, I, I think it's just a case of if he thinks it's the right thing to do, then let's worry about what the performance on the pitch is when the teams, team are playing on the pitch because right now it's very difficult to criticise what England are doing on the pitch. So why do we need to pull to pieces the squad assembly because he happens to leave a couple of players out for reasons that, that might have good... But you've been critical of the past of certain players for I've been I've been critical of Gareth Southgate in the past because I don't think anyone could have got a a luckier set of charms born under a four-leaf clover with the draws that have got you into the semi-finals of the World Cup and the finals of the European Championship and yet we come out with neither one of them in our pocket as a win which I think they should have done I'd be critical of him selecting people to take penalties that haven't taken penalties in professional football in a final of the European Championship you can criticise his inability to change the team in the Croatian semi-final in the first World Cup that he was involved in as a manager all of those are fair game and honest criticisms but just to pick the bones out it's unfair it's unfair I think England have progressed hugely where are we ranked now that's not the point I'm making though is it that's not the point I'm making. No, no we didn't. We, the argument wasn't framed in have they progressed. The argument was framed. There'd be in, scrutiny. Is there, is there fair There's scrutiny with every manager, of course. And, but this one's performing very well, and he's he's been quite magnificent in the way that he's leading this team. Yeah. Yes, but, he fell at the final hurdle at Wembley against against Italy, yep. and maybe um, reflecting on that, uh, maybe we went with the wrong shape to begin with. We took a step backwards into the into where we the way whether that we he played went with the wrong shape or whether he went with the wrong tactics formation f- feel good factor whatever it is that he did you get to a European Championship final you have an opportunity to win it you have a draw that people would pray for in most instances he's had two major tournaments where the draws have gone absolutely in his favour from the World Cup that the group that we had through to the draws that we had to get to a semi final the only team teams that we perhaps couldn't beat or Simon, shouldn't beat Belgium game, and Croatia. Our first game in the Euros was against one of the finalists in the previous World Cup. I don't think that's a necessarily a kind draw. OK, there's one uh, or two yeah, players. That, as, as they that, were, not as Croatia. they are now. Yeah, but, but nonetheless, it's you, you're, you're straight into the deep end and you've got, you know, it was a performance straight away. Perhaps the most disappointing performance was against Scotland. But apart from that, the Germany game, I thought England really did well in this. It in did? This the, the, it doesn't mean that someone's beyond reproach, I just feel, I feel... I'm going to say this. I feel the tactics were quite, weren't quite right, and we scored after sort of you know two or three minutes, and mm-hmm. that almost spoiled us into thinking, okay, okay, Italy, you come on to us now. When actually we needed to change the numbers in midfield. I mean, if it were brilliant, but we were being outnumbered. It was a tactical thing. I'm pretty certain they've trolled through it, and Gareth Southgate will learn from this because he's very good at learning things. He doesn't make mistake twice. Um, so no, we. But he got didn't a- change it against Croatia, did he? He needed to change it in the first half against Croatia in the World Cup semi-final. They were poor and we were very good. In the second half, they they changed up and we didn't change. In the semi in the final against the Italians, the same thing happened for different reasons. They got control of the ball. They passed us off the pitch and we didn't do anything to change it. 
Yeah, but if I was stood there in his place, I fully understood why he wanted to stick with what he had. Because really, if you remember, we, scored, we gave the ball away from a corner. Yeah, back pass went out of play, and we broke incredibly and scored right the other end after just two or three minutes. It was the first time the Italians had come out, and only time. And it was like, okay, of like, okay, I can understand then why you sort of stick with it. But yeah, it needed to change it. But that's us being really picky and reflecting and they looking back. They battered us, Martin. From the thirty-fifth minute up onwards, they battered us. Battered us and battered us and battered us and battered us, and we waited until eventually they scored, and then we changed. Now, if you want to be ultra critical, which I'm being, because that's what it takes to win things, you get to a European Championship final at home in virtually a home tournament with the draw that we had, you've got to say, wow, the England managers that are better healed than him that would have loved to have had that opportunity, that would have won this tournament with the resources that he had available to him. And I think that's right to poke, but what I do agree with you on, I don't think it's right to turn suddenly to start to move the criticism into why is he omitting young players? Because he's the England manager and that's what he chooses to do. And if, if that subsequently affects the performance on the pitch, then we can have that debate. But currently, it isn't because the World Cup qualifiers that we're playing in, we look a decent side, don't we? we definitely so the do. argument that we're sitting here saying, let's pick him to pieces because he's dropped Greenwood and Bellingham because they're younger is the exact right argument but you, to say that's, you've that's, that's in the not past right. had an issue with the debate of player welfare you know even yesterday we were talking about Thomas Tuchel saying after eight games mentally our team's not right yeah of course I do of course I do so that's I, what I, we're talking about I, now. I, have a, I have an issue with the idea that after eight games the players are mentally fatigued um, and there's a challenge in my <clears> mind that's suggesting that that should be the case but by the same token these players are playing lots of games no you need to change your mind Simon why? You, because every time I listen to you on this show, you're always barking about players. You need Observing. to love your players. Yeah. Yeah. You have to love your players. You can't look at the players and think, okay, they're earning too much money. You have to understand the players. You need to change your mind on it. But, That's but, what you need but, to do. But hang on a second, Martin. Who am I barking at? The players or the manager? Because who said it? The players or the manager? The manager said the players are fatigued. So I'm not barking at the players. I'm looking at the manager going, you've got a squad of 25 high-quality footballers that you're rotating. You've got players that expect to be remunerated and looked after in a certain way and it has to come into the fact but that the just because you live you, in an ideal world no, no, the first thing you say, the first thing you say well, what's, what do you mean they're fatigued the players are fatigued no the manager is telling you they're fatigued so we just to take that on board professionally normally on the back of a defeat yeah but professionally the players do need to be I mean look at Jack Wilshire he's probably one of the, the best talents we've seen come out of English football for many years he's 29 years of age now he's not playing football mm -hmm. he's, he played too much football we have Arsene Wenger telling us he regrets Every day he regrets the amount of football he made in play as a young man. We have to listen to that. Yeah, but you, you a lovely utopian helicoptering perspective, but the only reason they play so many games is because the structure of football is balanced in such a way that the economics don't make any sense. So the games have to keep on expanding. I don't disagree. If you keep pushing people and pushing people to play so many games, then ultimately they're gonna, you're going to break down one or two things, either the physical capability or the product quality. So we're mm. in agreement there. But you also have to look at the reasons why. And you're saying I'm barking at players. No, I'm barking at the, or if you call it barking, I'm observing stridently on the basis of what's being said. Every time a manager comes out and talks about mental fatigue, it's normally on the back of a defeat. It's normally in preparation for a poor performance. So we as a, as a public sitting there watching it going, young athletes, and I listen to people like Danny Murphy who have a right to have an opinion as well, that sit there with the same vantage point that I have as an ex-footballer because I didn't kick footballs and you did and you can always win that argument, saying he doesn't have that argument either. He thinks it's a load of old tosh. He thinks that we have to look at it from the pragmatic point of view of suggesting that some of that is just nonsense. You have a different view, but it's not barking, it's observing and putting it through a critical ringer. Yeah, but they're facts, you know. In they're terms, not facts, they, are they? They are, because it's a fact that if you're going to keep playing game, play, playing too many games, you're going to end up with injuries, you're going to end up with fatigue, and it's about rest and about well, the manager picking a journey through that. If you that. compress the fixture list, you'll see more injuries. Last year, they didn't see more injuries, they saw less so where's the facts then then? Because we were compressing last year's season on the back of COVID, this year's season, uh, i.e. 1920 then 2021, and the facts bore out that there were less injuries. But Garrison's in a very fortunate position. He can rest players because of the, the squad we're he's doing. on that. Yeah, he's doing exceptionally well. But I, I do feel that we need to... I'm just trying to change your opinion because it's kind of like, get back to loving players. You had a situation when you were at Palace and you came out of there, you paid good money for players. I don't want to turn this into a row, 
but you've now seemed to have, it's, it seems to have darkened your vision, not view, at all. view of players. That's not true at all. A little I, bit. I, I call players for what they are. I, I'm a great lover and admirer of Mason Greenwood. I look at players, I look at Mason Mount, I look at players, and when I see a player of character and substance and backbone and decency, I'll call it for what it is. If I see a lightweight player, if I, if I see Riyad Mahrez going on strike, I'll have something to say about that, because I think it's right to say. I think you build characters. There's not enough characters and substance in football, because too many people are sitting there being lightweight about how the players need to be managed and how they need to be looked after. They need to do their jobs well and people need to make sure that they're able to do their jobs well. And I think on the whole, players are wrapped in cotton wool and looked after very, very well. You might disagree with that, but that's my view. It's not a case of dark and it's got nothing to do with my experiences at Palace. That's you conflating one issue with another to try and take a popular view of the fact that I might have a dim view of certain players. Ra- not and true at all. Wrapped in cotton wool, the top clubs, it doesn't happen. It does, you don't carry people. You, this leadership, Marcy, it's about leadership. It's, it's, about, and it's about leadership and standard that you have set within a football club and people follow you. You work ethic, how you work in the club, and that needs to come to the manager. In this instance, Gareth Southgate setting the standard. He's saying, look, okay, I'm going to rest you, but I'm going to need you. I'm going to bring you back. So it's about managing that. And we agree on that. And we agree on that. All right, that's round one. I think there's plenty (laughs) more to come from you two. That was quite exciting just listening into that. This is Talk Sport.